Thank you for introducing me. So um, uh, I just uh, talk briefly about the, the general diagnosis of latent TB uh, tuberculosis infection since we have uh, two um, uh, special speakers for the next two topics. So I begin with the outline and uh, briefly uh, in general for importance of diagnosis of uh, latent TB infection. Uh, which available are uh, tuberculin skin test and uh, interferon gamma release assay or EGRA and uh, um, the detail of the some of the tests of EGRA assay and uh, whether there is the new test available for uh, LTBI infection uh, method. As you know that uh, TB burden still a uh, major problem in our globe. Uh, uh, recently in the TB global report from the WHO. So the TB um, incident rates still very high in the, some areas of the world, such as the Africa, South Africa, uh, even the Asia Pacific still have the major problem. And also the HIV prevalence in the new and relapsed TB case also very high in the South Africa and uh, especially in uh, uh, Asia uh, or even Thailand. And uh, as compared to uh, globally, Asia and Pacific accounts for the two thirds of the estimated new TB cases and uh, one five of the multi drug resistant or RRTB and uh, one out of the fifth. Uh, estimated in TB HIV co-infection uh, and 50% uh, uh, also estimated TB mortality. So the TB is still the major um, uh, mortal mortality rate of the in HIV uh, infection. And the uh, challenge for Thailand, so the tuberculosis is the still major problem. Uh, in Thailand, and Thailand is uh, still one of the 22 countries with highest TB burden worldwide and also still high burden for TB and even uh, high burden for uh, MDR TB as well. And the uh, TB still is one third of the world's population is infected with latent TB and one uh, tenth of the infected people become uh, uh, developed with active TB. And uh, let's just uh, briefly talk briefly about the TB definition. The latent TB, uh, as the TB baseline, live dormant inside the lung, but do not cause the destruction of organs, no sign or symptom of disease. And the LT, uh, latent TB is not infectious, but the TB receives its uh, baseline progressively in weight and damage a part of the body. Uh, they have uh, signs and symptoms of disease appear and can be infectious. And this is the this slide uh, show the natural history of TB infec infection. And the majority of these people eradicate the infection and never develop active TB disease. Some of these people remain asymptomatically infected for years with latent TB infection as you can see. And some of these people become ill from TB within weeks to months and develop active TB. So the outcome depends on the person's immune status. So what is the risk of LTBI progressing to active disease? Uh, in general, in HIV uh, negative person, the body's immune system usually keeps TB infection under control. Only five to 10% of LTBI cases progress to active TB during their lifetime. And people living with HIV with LTBI have a five to 10% risk for developing TB disease each year. Yeah, this is the still the, uh, um, confirmed that the people who are infect, infected with both 
MTB and HIV are much more likely to develop t TB disease as you can see very large with over a lifetime of uh, uh, TB in infection and HIV infection. And uh, uh, latent TB is the presence of uh, MTB organisms with outside and symptoms or radiographic or bacterial uh, evidence of TB disease. And clearly, there is no gold standard for diagnosis of uh, LTBI. Uh, usually, latent TB infection have positive tuberculin skin test or interferon gamma release assay or EGRA and have chest X-ray normal. But uh, if uh, primary TB, the TST or EGRA is also usually positive, but chest X-ray is usually <coughs> abnormal. That's why I just uh, uh, distinguish uh, these two diseases. The early detection and treatment is priority, especially for people living with HIV. Anybody with symptoms suggestive of TB should be investigated. Close contact of TB patients should also be checked by health staff, and active versus passive case fighting should be done. So how could LTBI and subclinical TB disease diagnose accuracy because it's quite uh, uh, difficult to uh, diagnose? You can see that LTBI infections have TST positive, equal positive, but uh, the rates are negative. And subclinical TB disease, which is the view developer to active TB disease, also have uh, TST uh, in EGRA positive and some uh, sometimes culture intermittently positive. And there yeah, are other like uh, sometimes with no symptoms but uh, need uh, different treatment. So the LTBI is uh, very uh, important to diagnose. Okay, so we go to the diagnosis of latent TB infection. So the first test uh, is uh, tuberculin skin test. Uh, it first used in the 19 uh, uh, decade and as the diagnosis for TB. Uh, this test measures a person's cell-mediated immune response to MTB, but uh, this test requires two visits for uh, administer and then reading the result. Uh, per PPD or purified protein derivative uh, was injected intradermally into the forearm, and uh, 48 to 72 hours later, the site will um, uh, wait for the reaction as the induration and erythema. The TST has a difficulty in proper intradermal injection of PPD, and reaction, reaction size depends on many factors such as size and depth of the injection, uh, differences of interpretation by different observers, uh, different cutoff for different uh, situation. And people without TB are often falsely positive due to many reasons, including BCG vaccination and immune reactivity to non-tuberculous mycobacterium. Where there is the high prevalence of TB, the TST is the of little value. And this test does not distinguish actually between infection and disease. And negative results in case of someone uh, co-infected with HIV or severe malnutrition or mediated TB can give the negative result. So for the EGRA, uh, EGRA is the whole blood test used to detect MTB infection. Clearly, there are two USFDA approved EGRA uh, commercially available in the US. Uh, one is the quinteferon and then develop into quinteferon go in tubes and then clearly is the go pass, quinteferon go pass. The other test is the T spot TV test. So, this is the briefly of the quinteferon technology. Uh, as in the in vitro diagnostic uh, technology, able to provide information on the 
activity of the cell mediated function of the immune system from robust samples. And the basis of contraferon technology is the stimulation of the effector cells in Hobart with a specific antigen, uh, they, and they used uh, CFP10 and ESAT6 uh, antigens, or mitosin and subsequent simple quantification of resulting interferon gamma in the plasma, and mostly the detection by the ELISA base. And this is the T-spot TB test. T-spot TB uh, used mononuclear cells separated from the whole but collected in heparin tubes, uh, also used uh, uh, specific antigen uh, with ESAT6 and CFP10 and used the uh, uh, ELI spot to measure. This test measure number of interferon gamma producing CD4 and CDHC cells, or we call spot forming cells. But uh, this test can, um, may have cause react with the uh, Imarinum or uh, Salsky, Kansas I, and Fodenay. Uh, so probably uh, this uh, type, the uh, mycobacterium can give the re positive result. And this is the positive result will uh, read out the spot of the uh, interferon gamma producing cell. As the CD4 T cell is the major uh, role in the pulmonary host defense, so uh, there clearly there's the novel assay, the new assay for detection of the allergen specific uh, T effector cell as well as T regulatory response. So uh, in 2009, the, uh, John Saunders has uh, found under direction of the uh, one of the our speaker today, uh, Tony, uh, in his lab. Uh, discover the co-expression of CD25 and CD134, or we call OX40, that show detected the uh, uh, response to CD4, we call antigen, and TB-specific T cell can be identified. And on top of that, we can, uh, this assay can also detect the uh, T regulatory response specific to uh, antigen uh, as the CD39. Uh, this is the, the described work in the journal Immunology on uh, 2009. So we will hear more the detail of this study from Tony uh, for the um, application of this uh, essay on the uh, next topic. And this is the show the pattern. So you can see the when you stimulate with ESAT6 and CFP10 a specific immune response to TB, so the cell uh, will generate TB-specific CD, CD4 T cell response that can uh, detect to uh, whether that uh, uh, a patient can uh, have the TB infection or recognize of the uh, TB antigens. So why is it uh, important to distinguish between latent infection and active uh, TB disease because we have to provide a correct diagnosis uh, uh, active disease um, so the organ destruction or can be death by the disease and can be spread of infection in the community so we have to um, provide the correct disease between active and latent TB infection and to provide a correct and efficacious uh, therapy so active uh, and latent TB have different regimen for a different type of treatment. And I'm, uh, I am sure that uh, clearly there is uh, many shorter regimen both for active TB disease and latent TB uh, infections are uh, starting to increase. And to save uh, human and economic costs, avoiding complex evaluation, uh, such as clinical, radiological, and surgery procedures, especially extrapulmonary TB. So, and the current latent tuberculosis infection guidelines from WHO also have prioritized risk group for LTBI testing and treatment. Uh, these groups are including people living with HIV, 
uh, children um, under five years of age uh, with contact to pulmonary TB or other clinical indications such as the uh, patients who have dialysis or transplantation. So all these uh, risk groups are strong recommend recommendation to uh, to uh, fight the latent tuberculosis infection. Even the also in the guideline uh, uh, suggests that either TST or EGRA can be used to test for FTBI, but the FTBI testing by TST or EGRA is not a requirement for initiating preventive treatment among people living with HIV and contacts under five years. So we still need simpler, inexpensive tests for FTBI diagnosis nowadays. And uh, that's it, the uh, recommendation right now. So I would like to end uh, my talk here and uh, I would like to thank uh, all people in, uh, involved with the uh, All Worlds for TB. And uh, so we are going to hear uh, for the next talk about uh, uh, more detail or more information from uh, another case from the, our speaker. Thank you. So thank you, Dr. Suzanne.